and we are back recording another video about the new Trek Marlins which have just recently launched in North America. This one we're continuing the ride. We are on the Gen 2 Marlin 6 and this is kind of all the terrain that you may see or ride on in any new Marlin. The video we're going to check out today is the Trek Marlin 7. So we're going to look at some images and talk about the changes in that model. If you have not seen the changes, it's not massive in some ways. Per spec wise, there is real no changes between the new one and the old one. So the Marlin 7, it sees the least amount of per spec changes, but still gets all those geometry changes that all the other Marlins are getting from 6, 7, 8. Marlin 5 and 4 are staying the same as a budget friendly option. So the best part about the new series is more colors and new colors. Obviously with the pandemic we've been running the same colors for quite some time and it's nice to get some new ones in and fresh looking colors. The first one up is a galactic gray which in person looks really nice. It is gray but it does make it a bit of a change as opposed to that classic gray Trek has been doing with. The next we've seen before which is a teal to nautical navy fade. This one in person looks really good. The slash has had this color. I think another fuel or another bike has had this color. And in person it looks really really good. The nautical navy has been a very popular color. The teal has been a very popular color. Put them together and add some red logos and it looks really nice. And then the Azor. Azor has been a solid selling color. It's a nice neutral, girls, boys, days, it's all perfect for everyone. It is a nice sharp color with white lettering. Good to have some changes to it. So like we say, there's not too much for changes in part spec, but we'll go over what it does have. This is still the Shimano Dior shifting, so 10 speed, and it has Shimano, or should have Shimano hydraulic disc brakes. So that is an upgrade from the Marlin 6. The Marlin 6 comes with Tektro brakes, this is the first model where you get Shimano brakes. Obviously Tektro versus Shimano, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but the ones which come with this one are more reliable. Maybe not reliable, but definitely a little more powerful and they have a lot better feel to them. As you can see with the Marlin, you can kind of go anywhere and everywhere with them. They are made as a commuter first. So having hydraulic disc brakes is a nice thing, but once you get off road, getting a more powerful setup becomes a lot more needed than anything. As you can see the Marlin 7 as well jumps up to a RockShox fork so this one still has the same amount of travel at 100 mils so you'll still be able to go and roll over pretty much the same stuff you would with the Marlin 6 but it's overall just going to perform significantly better. RockShox knows what they're doing even with the entry level setup they know exactly how to make a relatively lightweight one with some minor features obviously this doesn't have crazy customization to it but you can definitely make it feel like a little stiffer a little easier softer feeling with the left side control there and then on the right side you do have the ability to actually reduce um, the suspension to nothing and lock it out this is still the alpha aluminum as with all of them and it has added that through skew frame to it so the overall geometry has been updated so it will be a little more trail friendly. Overall around town I don't know if you'll notice a huge amount but in the more technical tricky sections it's just naturally going to roll over significantly better. Now if you're coming from an Excalibur you may not notice a huge amount. There was never a huge change in geometries between the Marlin and the Excalibur. So it is interesting that this one now is potentially even slacker than where the Excalibur was. Through skew on the back end allows you to just line up those gears a little better. It will add a little bit stiffness but I feel like it's more for the control and installation feature of it. So you're actually going to be able to quickly install and uninstall your rear tire without too many issues. Cool things about this one and the Trek Marlin 6, 7, 8. You can actually put a 120 mil fork on this. So that's kind of cool. Overall, you do need to get um, a couple things. One, you can find a few straight tube forks at 120, but not many. 
but most importantly there is actually an adapter now to allow it to take a tapered head tube and that just sits at the bottom of it so that's something to consider this is somewhat of an upgradable and i could see this model and higher taking away from the excalibur series and this is now your more elite upgradable race bike Covey wheels so this is a double walled tubeless ready wheel comes good to go it does not come with tubeless ready tires so still that same xt3 comp so this was like a baby minion it's a little more aggressive on the outside than what the xr3 was but overall it's not like a super aggressive tire that if you never went off-road it's not gonna be vibration and you know uncomfortable to ride or just wearing down the rubber unnecessarily max tire size you can fit is a 2.4 and that is exactly what these ones are they're just a yb 30 tpi so again not tubeless ready but at least the rims are so you can go tubeless if you want i'm still 50 50 i don't mind installing a tube it's quick it's easy and if you did not know stan's tubeless sealant is actually rated to go into tubes so you can actually get some of the benefits of tubeless system in a regular tube bike with no additional modifications you just need a tube with a removable valve core which isn't the hardest thing to come by has a 28 tooth chain ring on the front so this one will be more trail orientated and easy riding if you were going to use this bike as a fast high speed commuter i would highly recommend looking into a bigger chain ring you can fit all the way up to a 34 tooth on this one so that is a big change and it will just make your top speed faster but overall obviously limit your low end speed the new geometry it still means it's going to climb well just like this slow hill i'm climbing here you can get up pretty much anything with any trek marlin but with a bit beefier of a tire and new geometry it's going to put you on top of the pedals a little bit more the seat post is going to be a little steeper so essentially the power output is going to be a little more efficient and then it'll put your weight a teeny bit further forward you know the changes between the previous year and this year are so minimal it's not going to be massive you'd notice it if you rode them back and forth but overall riding one and maybe taking a winter off and riding another you're just going to notice more trail friendly features as opposed to actually struggling on some more technical stuff and most of it is all in the downhill side of things not the uphill climbing who's this bike for honestly anyone who wants to start venturing more into trails that rock shark shooty fork and the brakes are going to be a big improvement obviously now both the marlin 6 and the marlin 7 come with that tubeless ready wheel so that's a little less of a bump in like benefit to go to this one but brakes they're definitely going to have a little more power to them and they definitely feel a little better better modulation and even just the shape of the levers i do like Shifting is the same. The fork is improved and it will be a better fork, a little lighter weight. Overall, this bike's about 32 pounds, 14 kilos. So it's gonna be a nice reactive bike. I can take mine pretty much anywhere. And again, this is a Gen 2 Merlin 6 and I've had no issues with it. It feels fast, it feels easy. There are situations where maybe a little more weight and a little more slacker front end would be better for control. But, as you can see, it handles pretty well on these descents. GoPro never makes it look as steep as it was, but it definitely was. You can definitely handle it well. I am impressed to see the tire. The X-T3 looks like a significantly better off-road tire. But, for anyone not using this for off-road, I don't think you'll even notice it. As you come over the trail system here, you can really see what the Marlin is capable of. You can really ride it wherever you want. That front suspension gives you more than enough. The back end is still comfortable to ride. I do have an upgraded seat on this, which I would recommend people doing. And that can be added to even the new generation Marlin 6, 7, and 8. I've just gone to the commuter saddle, and I don't wear padded shorts anymore, and I think it works out really, really well. As you can see, the Marlin series is a very popular one. Lots of people want to get into mountain biking but don't want to break the bank. For around the $1,000 mark, you are getting well worth it. 
As you look at the Marlin 6 now, it has the upgrade ability to become a Marlin 7. The Marlin 7 just comes with a few features that if you are trail riding right off the bat, it's going to perform a little better. But as a beginner, will you notice a huge amount? I don't think so. I think really take into consideration how good the Marlin 6 is and how it comes. And I think you'll be very happy with how that rides. Intrigued to see where they go with this. Obviously, the next video after this is of the Marlin 8. And that one sees some massive improvements. I can see the Marlin 7 slowing down in sales. Marlin 6 picking up and the Marlin 8 picking up because that is a hidden price decrease essentially in this new model. They have changed them all to become a little more better spec without increasing the price and that's how you hide a price increase because or a high decrease because it just didn't change. Essentially it's the same price as it was last year but now with better parts. Now the Marlin 7 is the only one which really just gets a frame upgrade but this frame upgrade will work for everyone just getting ice cream rip around town or the trail rider if you are looking at the two bikes and you're going to really trail ride strongly look at the marlin 8 if you are keeping on a budget will you notice a big difference between the marlin 7 and 6 i don't think so still hydraulic disc brakes same shifting front fork is still reasonable i don't have any issues with it and uh, the geometry is the same on both all right so keep an eye out the marlin 8 video will be coming very very soon i thank you for watching please subscribe and if you have any questions let me know down below and i will get back to them just takes me a while sometimes all right guys good luck we'll talk to you soon